Today's super basic tutorial is all about single crochet. It's a fundamental stitch that everybody's got to know and we're going to do it back and forth. So it's the uh, how to make nice flat square pieces of fabric using single crochet. And just so you're not sitting there kind of just practicing, we're actually going to make a dishcloth today. This is all single crochet and it's a great way to learn how to make um, nice flat rows so that you don't end up with something that goes too much out or too much in, but you'll see what I'm talking about later. So you're going to want basic cotton handicrafter uh, yarn, so cotton yarn, and whatever sized hook you are comfortable with. I would say anything between a four millimeter and a six millimeter hook is perfectly fine. So grab your hook, grab your crochet cotton, and let's get started. Single crochet. Single crochet is a very basic, uh, mostly used stitch in crochet. It's um, uh, it's not the smallest stitch. The smallest stitch is actually the slip stitch um, or even the chain. But we're going to focus on the slip stitch today. So now, if you're uncomfortable uh, with a um, slip knot or with chaining, then you're going to want to refer to the two links below in the comment box. One is on making a slip knot. The other is on creating chains. And today we're going to focus on single crocheting a flat piece of fabric. So this is where you go back and forth and back and forth. This is the very thing that gave me a lot of trouble when I was first learning how to crochet. Um, I had difficulty keeping the fabric a nice rectangular uh, shape and there's a reason for that. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to create a slip knot. There we go. And because today we're making a very basic pot holder or a um, uh, dishcloth, we're going to want to make it so that it's about as, as wide as our, our, our hand is along. So we're going to chain until we have the desired number of stitches. So I'm going to start with 20 because I know um, that 20 is a good round number to begin with. So we're going to chain and count. Always remember to count. There's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Okay. I have single crocheted 20. Now I know that I'm going to want my dish rag to be a little bit bigger than that and I think uh, just for simplicity, you know what, I'm going to put a little border on it at the end which is also single crochet so don't worry it's not like we're going to jump into anything too difficult so I think I'm going to leave it at 20. Here is the trick to keeping your work perfectly rectangular. Because we're single crocheting and we want an even number of 20 stitches in a row at all times, before we turn to go back like a typewriter, you have to give yourself a turning chain. Because we're single crocheting and a single crochet isn't too high a stitch, you only need to chain one. So you chain one. Now technically, your foundation row is now 21 stitches across, but that one stitch will always disappear into the first single crochet you make. So now we're going to single crochet. We're going to work into the second chain from the hook. That's this one right here, because the turning chain is the chain that you ignore. You never, ever, ever use the turning chain, which is the chain directly below the hook, unless you're doing something super fancy 
when they tell you to. But they will always tell you if they want you to work into that chain, because this chain is typically to be ignored. So we're going to use the second chain from the hook. A single crochet looks like this. You identify the stitch you're going to work into. In this case, it's the second chain from the hook. You take your chain, or I'm sorry, you take your hook and you bend it. You pass it front to back through that stitch. Okay, I'm going to show you that again. So you take your hook and you push it front to back through that stitch you want to work into. You're going to have what looks like two loops on your hook, and that's exactly what you should have. From here, you're going to take your working string, you're going to wrap it around your hook so that your hook can grab it, and pull it back through that working stitch. Now, you still have two loops on your hook. That's exactly what you want to have. You've got the one you started with, you've got the one you've just created, and now we're going to finish the stitch. You wrap the yarn around your hook one more time so that you can grab it and pull it, and you pull that yarn right through one and two, both loops. You will wind up with one loop on your hook, exactly what you're supposed to have after you finish a stitch. In fact, after you finish every crochet stitch, you'll always come back to this one single loop on your hook. We're going to do that again. So we've just worked into this stitch and you can tell because there's there's a stitch in it. We're going to work into the next one along. So this is this nice untouched stitch right next to that one. You take your hook, you pass it front to back, through that stitch, you've got two loops on your hook. You take your working string, pass it over your hook so that you can grab it, right? Pull it through the first stitch, so the working stitch. Pull it back so that you have two loops on your hook, just like that. And now to complete the stitch, you wrap your yarn around your hook. So you can grab it and pull through both. Now you've created two single crochet. So we're going to do this one more time. Identify the next stitch. See, it's not this one because this one has a stitch in it. It's the one right next to it, this nice untouched one here. We're going to take our hook and push it front to back through that stitch so that you've got your first loop and now the stitch on your hook, so that's two loops. Wrap your string around your hook so that you can grab it. Pull it back through the stitch. The act of pulling a loop through a working stitch is what anchors all your work together. So now you have two official loops on your hook. To complete the stitch, wrap it around your hook once. Make sure you can grab it and pull through both. And you've made three single crochet. As you do this, you're going to get more and more even. Your stitches will become uh, more even. They'll be either a little tighter or a little looser, but they'll be even. They'll, they'll, they'll be a balance because you will have a style all your own. And, uh, and as you get comfortable with this, you're going to be able to do them really, really quickly. I know maybe you don't believe that right now, but you will. There's my fourth one. Okay, I'm four single crochet into this foundation row. And I don't want to use the same hole that I've just worked into. So I'm going to identify the next stitch, which is this one here hook goes front to back, grabs the yarn, pulls it back out. I've got two loops on my hook. Wrap the yarn, go through both. Again, your hook goes through the stitch front to back, grabs the yarn, pulls it back, 
two loops on your hook, wrap, and go through both. Again, hook goes through front to back, grabs the yarn, pulls it back. You've got two loops on your hook. You want to grab your yarn, wrap it around your hook so you can grab it, pull it through both. And now you are going to do this on your own until the end of the row. Okay, I'm just nearing the end of the row. And this is the last stitch. There's always the knot, okay? You ignore the knot. You only ever work into the last stitch. And if you're really confused, you could have been counting all the way along, but we're going to go back and count um, once we've finished. So you're going to work your last single crochet into that last stitch. Okay? And there's your foundation row. Now, I'm going to pull up a loop so that I don't unravel my work because I'm going to use my hook as sort of a teaching, a training tool. If you look at the top of your work, it should look like a row of chains. And that's because technically at the top of every stitch is a chain connecting them. And this is how we count. This last stitch, the first one we made, is the first real chain on the top of that row. And you just count the chains. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 20. It's exactly what we want to have. So I'm going to put my hook back in my loop here. Now, because we have finished a row, we want to single crochet back the other way. We do that by giving ourselves a turning chain. So you chain one. Then you flip your work. Because you, uh, if you're right-handed, you're always going to work to the left. If you're left-handed, you're always going to work to the right. Now, we counted, so we know that we have exactly 20 stitches to work with, and we want to put a single crochet into each of those 20 stitches. You've chained one, and you want to identify that first stitch that is the stitch we're going to work into. Now, instead of it being like one of the edges of the chain, it's going to be the entire top of the stitch. So, as you can see, there's a hole right there. And that hole is what you're going to put your hook through. So you're going to take your hook, you're going to pass it through that hole so that the entire stitch top sits on top. See how it's it looks like two loops? It's actually just the top of the stitch, okay? So technically, that's the stitch you're working into. You're going to grab the yarn and pull it back through that stitch so that you've got two loops on your hook and wrap and go through both. So now we're single crocheting across the top of this first row of single crochet. And from here on out, it looks exactly the same. So you take your hook, pass it through the whole stitch so that you've got what looks like that funny little chain thing running across the top of your hook. Grab your yarn and pull it back so that you've got two loops on your hook. And if you're a little loose here and there, don't worry about it. Wrap your yarn and pull it through both. And it's going to start to look like that. So once more, take your hook, you identify your next stitch. And you know what? Your hook's going to go through that stitch. Even if you can't totally see the hole, your hook can find it. So trust in your hands because your hands will know the right feeling of things. Make sure that you've got both those chainy looking loops on top of your hook because that means you've worked the whole stitch. Pull back a loop so that you have two real loops on your hook. Wrap. Go through both. 
and your work is going to look just like that. So I'm going to invite you now to work across the rest of your first row and then I will see you at the very end. Okay, I have two stitches left to work into. So you can see them here, one and two. So this is number 19. So I passed my hook through it, wrap, pull up a loop so I have two, wrap, go through both. The last stitch is always a little funny because it kind of bends down because you created it at the, at the very end of the row. So just be patient with yourself. You might have to dig your, your hook a little bit just to get it through, but you still want to have that double-sided sort of chainy stitch thing looking on top of your hook. You grab your yarn and pull it back through that stitch, wrap, and pull through both loops. Now, as you can see, this has a straight edge on both sides. And the reason it has a straight edge on both sides is because you have given yourself a turning chain at the end of each row. Counting your rows is really easy. Because you're going back and forth, your rows are going to look different. Like every second row will look like the previous um, not the previous row, but the row before it. And it'll be easier to identify once we've gone a couple more rows in. But so far you've, you've done two full rows and this is what it looks like. So because we're going to do row three and we've reached the end, we are going to give ourselves a turning chain. So we grab our yarn and pull it through the loop. Then we flip our work. So now we're working back the other way. You identify, so you look at the top of your row, and you identify the first stitch. Now look at this. I chained one, right? And here's that chain that I made. It's that nice V-stitch right underneath my hook. That is a chain. That is not the stitch we're working into. The first stitch we're working into is the second from the hook. So remember our foundation row when we first started, you worked into the second chain from the hook. Well, every single time you start a row, when you're single crocheting, if you flip your work so that you're looking directly on top of it, you should have a chain one and what looks like a rows of chains, row of chains, and you always start in the second chain from the hook. Okay, and that's actually the first real stitch, but it, uh, it looks like this from the side. So this is the, the chain one and the actual stitch is part of the body of the fabric. So we pass our hook through that stitch grab our yarn and pull it back so that we have two real loops on our hook, wrap, and go through both. And then you're just going to continue back and forth in this fashion. You're going to put a chain one at the end of each row before you flip your work. That way you will have a nice flat rectangular square when you're finished. And because this is a dishcloth uh, or a sampler, if you, all you really want to do is practice, we're going to make it 20 rows high. And I know that might seem a little daunting if you've just started out, but 20 by 20 is a nice practicing rule of thumb. I always recommend doing 20 rows of something so that you get really comfortable with what the stitch feels like, with what the rows look like, and if you've got issues, they'll pop up during those 20 rows. So when you get to the end of your row, remember, do your last stitch, chain one, turn your work. So 20 rows, everybody. You're going to do 20 rows. And at the end of 20 rows, we will put our border on and we will be all finished. Our cute little washcloth. Okay, I'm just nearing the end of my 20th row and I wanted to take a moment and show you what it's going to look like. So here you go. That is 20 stitches by 20 rows. 
So if you've gotten this far, pat yourself on the back because you have just completed 400 single crochets. And by this point, you will definitely know how to do that stitch. Um, I'm also going to show you what it looks like when you want to count your rows. So because you go back and forth, you can see that there's sort of a natural break happening every two rows. So in this natural break, that's two whole rows completed or back front, back front, back front, back front. The easiest thing to do, I find, is to go identify all of these little ridges, sort of the inside ridges, and count 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. I have done 20 rows. Now, if you got this far and you're feeling pretty good but you're still a little nervous, um, then what I invite you to do is cut your string about here and pull it backwards through this loop pull it tight, fasten off, weave in that end, you have finished. And this is perfectly useful as a pot holder or a dishcloth, just the way it is. But if you're feeling kind of saucy, then we are going to put a border around the entire thing. So what you're going to do end up is with is 20 single crochet down the edge, another 20 across the bottom, 20 up the other side, and 20 a grand across the top and that's going to be a total of 80 stitches so if you're still with me and you still want to practice single crochet here we go we are going to chain one but instead of turning our work all the way around what we are going to do is work down the edge so this edge here so instead of turning and working backwards across here, we're going to work down the edge. So what you're going to do is turn it 90 degrees. So now you're working down this funny raw edge. You've chained one, and because you know that there are 20 rows down here, you're going to put in 20 single crochet. So your first stitch is actually going to be the side of your last single crochet. And you know what? It doesn't look like a regular stitch. It's not supposed to because this is the side of our work. So this is where you get to be carefree. You want to make sure that you pick up oh, what looks like a real stitch. So you're probably going to pass your hook through the hole of the previous stitch. So it looks like you've grabbed a whole stitch. You're going to single crochet into that. So that's the first one. Now the next one is kind of weird. So you see the next, the very next stitch, you'll be able to get like two loops. But that's the third one. You want to create one eh, somewhere in the middle here. So you know what I do? I just take my hook and jam it right into the very edge. And if I get two loops, great. If I only get one, eh, fine. It doesn't matter. You're going to create a tight little crochet in there. That's two. Now we're back into the easy one. You can just put your hook right through the middle of that stitch, grab both of those loops that looks like a regular old stitch, single crochet into it. That's three. Ah, oh, now we're into one of these funny ones again. So this time I only managed to get one. And you know what? That's fine with me too. I'll single crochet into that. Meanwhile, I'm back down to a regular looking stitch, so this one's easier to work with. I'll single crochet into that. And when you use the same color, as you can see, the somewhat oddness of that row is going to be kind of hidden or camouflaged because you're using the same color. And I want you to remember that because down the road when we're making really complicated um, hats and whatnot, you're going to want to remember that when you're putting in an edging um, row, you want to use the same color as the body of whatever you're edging because those stitches disappear and it gives you a nice flat working surface for down the road but we're not there yet so we're going to keep working so this is another funny one i'll just yeah, pick up this one we're going to work 20 single crochet down the edge now, nearing the end of this side so that's my second last, 
And now I'm at the very end. So now the very end's a bit wonky. I'm going to use this last little hole here instead of an actual stitch. Now, you see how that's made a nice flat edge across the side? Oh, just nothing like a finished piece, right? Because we're at the end, we're going to chain one again. We're going to turn our work 90 degrees, and this is an easy stretch. We're going to work across the bottom of our foundation row. But because we we put in an, a last stitch here, now you can do one of two things. You can single crochet into that stitch, and you'll actually have 21 across here. Or you can kind of round your edge and just work directly into the next stitch. It's completely up to you. Me, I'm going to put a stitch in the side of that last single crochet. And then you're going to work single crochets through the bottom of each of your foundation row stitches. And like I say, push your, your hook into where you think the stitch is and it will find the next available hole. It's not going to look the same way that a regular um, stitch does because, as you can tell, the strings kind of loop at the bottom. That's because that's the bottom of your chain row. So it is going to look a little funny, and that's okay. You wanna, if you're still unsure of yourself, it's a good idea to stop every once in a while and just kind of like flatten it. The nice thing about working with crochet cotton is that it has a bit of a weight to it, so you can kind of like flatten it and it'll stay there. Now, if yours wants to roll a little bit, don't worry. Not only is this a dishcloth, so it doesn't matter because it's going to get really used down the road, it's probably a sign that you tend to tight, uh, to, to stitch a little tightly, and that's okay because you're still learning, and this is a good project to learn on because you want to get comfortable with how tightly you naturally stitch or how loosely you naturally stitch. Um, either way, I don't want you walking away from this simple little project feeling like you, you failed because it's literally impossible <laughs> to mess up a dishcloth. And even if yours isn't perfectly flat, gotta keep in mind I've been single crocheting for 23 years or more now, and if you just started and you even look somewhat like this, pat yourself on the back because you've done the right thing. I've come to the edge, so I've come right to the edge. I'm going to put in one more, so that's my last stitch. Now, if you've still got your, your tail hanging around from when you started, um, you can ignore it, or if you're really feeling like you've nailed this whole single crochet thing, then you can just work over top of it, and I will show you how to do that. So if you don't want to do that, just, just sort of pull it to the back and ignore it. Otherwise, keep it, keep it lying across the side of the next row you're going to work in, and that is the side of our work. So this was our last row of the dishcloth. We chained one, worked down the side, chained one, worked across the bottom, now we're going to chain one, turn our work 90 degrees. I'm going to work into that last stitch, so the very side of that last stitch that I made. Now, this is a funny raw edge, so remember that every other stitch is going to be a bit difficult. I am going to work over top of my tail to weave it into my work by just keeping it down across the, the edge that I'm working on. So for example, I'm going to stick my hook in here to make a stitch, and I am crocheting over top of that tail. And like I say, if that feels a little too advanced for you, just hold the tail to the back. You can weave it in later, or you can weave it in, take a, take a break and weave it in right now, and then finish your single crochet. So every other stitch is going to be a bit awkward. So just remember when you're working down a raw edge, you want to make a stitch in the end of every row. And if that seems a little difficult, just count. You made 20 initial rows. So you want to have 
at least 20 stitches. Now I put in an extra one here and you see how it made it kind of curved to the edge? I don't think I much care for that so I'm going to take it out which is another thing that you shouldn't be afraid to do and I'm going to go into this stitch instead. Never be afraid to take out your work. The whole point of, of crocheting should be that you enjoy the process not so much you know the final end result and uh, taking out your work is also kind of cathartic it's like yeah well you know what I can do better and usually you do it's also a good way to learn all right that is the last that looks good I have a flat side, a flat bottom, another flat side. I'm going to chain one. Now, this is where we left off after we made the initial body. So I'm going to single crochet it back across the top of this just to sort of finish off my little border. I put an extra stitch at the very end of this row so that it's actually the side of the stitch is perpendicular or I should say parallel or even, <laughs> even with the top of my last row. So I'm going to work into the side of that stitch for sure. The other thing you might want to do is just sort of count. If it doesn't lie flat, first of all, if it lies flat, don't bother counting. Why stress yourself out? If it lies flat and it looks good and it's nice and square, don't bother counting. You don't have to. But if you're not quite sure that maybe it's like it's, 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 it's a bit funny or it's curling or it's strange, just count. So find your corner stitch and go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And I put in an extra stitch, so 21. So uh, I'm good with that. All right, now we're going to work across the top. This is our last straight row. I'm going to put a single crochet in the side of that last single crochet I made. And then the rest is easy. You're going to single crochet into each of those stitches of that final row that you made. You're going to do this all the way across and then we're going to finish with a little flourish. Okay, we're nearing the last few stitches. I've got one, two, and because I had a corner here, I'm going to work into this corner. Three. Now, don't cast off just yet. Lay it flat. Have a good look at it. Appreciate your work. There's nothing quite like a brand new dishcloth. And maybe that's just sort of <laughs> a, a, a hokey kind of cheesy thing to say, but I just love the way it looks and I love the way it feels. And these scrub dishes, unlike anything else. What if you want to hang it up? Well, that's what we're going to do. This is our finishing flourish. We are going to chain 10. But you wrap, you pull through the loop, you wrap, you pull through the loop. That's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's going to look like that. You're going to leave that on your hook. You're going to put your hook into the last stitch that you single crocheted into. You're going to wrap your hook or your yarn around your hook so that you can grab it and pull it up. And instead of single crocheting, we're just going to slip stitch. So that, that loop here, the one at the very end, this one, the one closest to the hook, you're going to grab it and you're going to pull it through a little tricky, pull it through that other loop. That's a slip stitch. Now, cut your yarn, take that tail and pull it through the loop. So if you want to do it with your fingers you can, otherwise you can just grab it with your hook and pull it through the loop and pull it tight. The nice thing about cotton is that it tends to stay. Some really slippery um, fabrics, 
you know, it doesn't even want to stay, but this does. And there you go. You've even got like a little hanger. You can take your your yarn needle and just stick it underneath some of the, the stitches in your last row. And you don't have to be really neat and tidy about this. And pull it through. And you can cut off whatever you don't need. There you go. You have just made yourself a dishcloth while learning how to single crochet. So that wasn't so hard, was it? That's 480 single crochet stitches. And if you got with me through to, through to the end, then you've got yourself your very own dishcloth. And you know what? These make great gifts. So don't underestimate um, the power of the single crochet. Anyway, everybody, please like and subscribe and share this video with your friends, especially if you know somebody else who's trying to get the handle on all the basic stitches. We're going to have a few more of these kinds of tutorials coming down the road, uh, just so everybody's got a nice basic group of reference tutorials that you can go to if you're not quite getting a stitch or there's something that kind of escapes you when we're... Uh, rampaging off to make all sorts of other nifty things. We've got more toy tutorials coming, uh, we've got some more clothing tutorials coming, and uh, some nice stuff for the fall too. So uh, stay tuned everybody, and we will see you again soon. Thanks for watching! Bye! <laughs>